When AMD launched the RX 480, it was not without controversy. Soon after its launch, several review sites noted that the card was pulling more than the specified 75 watts from the PCI Express slot. And while this wasn't a problem for most systems, being out of specification for a given power standard is actually an issue. But AMD addressed it immediately with a driver fix. Crimson 16.7.1, as it was named, rebalanced the load between the PCI Express slot and the PCIe power connector more evenly, as well as introduced some overall power savings with a compatibility mode option. Hopefully this video can shed some light on some of the more practical ramifications of the new driver updates. Let's dive straight into the performance marks for the new driver setup. While AMD claimed around a 3% general increase from 16.6.2 to 16.7.1, my performance increase was more around the 1 to 2% with compatibility mode turned off. Without compatibility mode, there was no overall power drop, but there wasn't supposed to be just a power rebalancing. However, one of the key things that did also come with the new driver was a reduced amount of high frame timings and stuttering in various games with the Crossfire configuration. So the Crossfire setup with two RX 480s was definitely more playable. With compatibility mode on, the power drop was about 15 to 20 watts per card in most scenarios, with Crossfire having a 30 to 40 or so overall drop in wattage. Performance decrease with compatibility mode on was also not too bad, with a difference of less than 1% in certain instances, and roughly 3% in others depending on the game or number of cards. Overall, it's good to see that AMD is reacting so swiftly to the faults that were implemented in the 480. However, even with the improvements that AMD has made in both performance and power draw on the RX 480 with driver optimizations, it's still slightly confusing to see that they're pushing performance per watt and power efficiency as their marketing point when the performance on the GTX 1070 is massively higher and roughly the same in power draw. But regardless of their marketing tactics, the RX 480 is still the best performance for the price that you're going to find at 1080p gaming, at least right now. We'll have to wait a day or so to find out how much the GTX 1060 is able to take that crown. So that wraps it up for this quick video on the AMD driver updates for the RX 480. I want to thank Wootware for sending over the PowerColor RX 480s for testing. Be sure to check Wootware out in South Africa if you're looking to get a new graphics card. Like this video if you found it helpful at all, dislike it if you disagree with me or my conclusions or you think I'm an NVIDIA fanboy. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech related content and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.